What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, more bad news surrounding the MCU. It's crazy how the tables have turned. <laughs> Nothing but more bad news. And one of them doesn't seem to be, for some, this may be like, oh, snap, we're going to see everything, right? But to us, it seems like they're just like, here, let's just forget about it. Because that's what tends to happen with these shows that you release all at once. Two, three weeks, I said, the buzz is gone. We can move on. We had this, we had this like, ray of light with guardians three box office exceeding expectations people were happy with it with the a cinema score the the holds in the box office were good the movie's going to make a good amount of money and so for a brief moment it was like a reminder of like oh yeah oh those good old days when the mcu was reliable and everyone went to the theater and left happy and we made it not even three weeks after that movie came out and we get what we're about to talk about bad news yeah it was nostalgia brian that they gave the guardians of the galaxy gave us a little bit of nostalgia to the good old days but first we have talk of they've they've said that they're going to release all the echo episodes and what did i text to you the second you sent me that news they just want to get they just want to dump it they just want <laughs> It's done. We already filmed it, you know. And, and that's before the rumor mill hit. I texted yeah. you. I was like, the only reason they, that sounds like they just want to move on. From oh yeah, that yeah. That, when I, when I saw that headline, I was like, yeah, they're trying to just like. And there's remnants, possible remnants of people who were there. That this this was perhaps their idea, and they're just. This is like Brian, like here. Again, watch it. Say what you're gonna say, and it's not gonna be like She-Hulk, where we had to 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 uh, endure <laughs> waiting to see She-Hulk, not in a good way, but to see what they would do. Um, but for Echo, it's it's Brian. I don't know. If, wow, even Kevin said like, "Yo, this is unwatchable." That's the rumor. We've never had a rumor like that, that Kevin Feige thought they, that someone turned in unreleasable product. He, he's the one behind the Marvels, and he's saying that this is unwatchable. Unreleasable, sorry. That's huge. I, I, this is going to be interesting, Brian. Cause the rumor is they reshot the entire series from scratch. Wow. So like in She-Hulk's case, they 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 reordered the show a lot. There are a lot of rumors that the, that show what we saw was very much move, the pieces were moved around relative to what the the showrunners wanted. But the pieces themselves, a lot of them were left intact. This one, there the rumor, if you believe it, is that whatever they turned into him will never see the light of day. Yeah. And what we're gonna get is some patchwork attempt to redo this show. And all of it to me. You know, to your point, sounds a lot like a show that maybe ought to have been canceled, yeah. but they couldn't for several reasons. And I commented to you, is this an example where having an interconnected universe hurts you? Because if you do get a lemon along the way, you can't cut it loose yeah. because you've got Daredevil and you've got Kingpin and yeah. you're trying to tell broader stories with them. So you have to put this show out because it gets you to the other show, but it hurts you because the show is bad. So we'll just have to wait and see what, uh, We'll get in November, right? Uh, it's going to be very interesting. And it sucks. You know why? Because I liked the actress in Echo. You know? I, 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 yeah, I, this, is not a, this is not a referendum on a lock of Cox at all. Certainly not. But if it's bad, and it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, look at Karen Page, man. And she was on a great show. And she's not being put in anything. 
<laughs> well, that's the thing, right? So I'm actually surprised. So we've had all this smoke and you know, uproar from the Snyderverse fans asking Netflix to somehow bring back the Snyderverse. It's like, where's the outcry to trade the characters from Marvel back to Netflix? Because yeah. they were making good shows and like, yeah. I don't know, so far, like Daredevil's work at the MCU, didn't like it in She-Hulk much, worried about it here. Kingpin got done wrong in Hawkeye. In Hawkeye. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I, I'm still excited for Born Again, but you have an 18 episode show where we don't like the two leads before you start anymore because of how you're portraying them. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say this and then we'll move on to Kang Dynasty. Yeah, I understand y'all going to be comic book accurate, but y'all didn't need to put Kingpin in a Hawaiian shirt, yo. At night in the streets of wherever he was. Looking like that, looking crazy, and then getting beat. You just can't do that. I understand y'all want to stick to the comics and be, you know, faithful, but you can't do it. You you can't like we love him. I love He Man. You can't do He Man live action like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that's 100 percent right. I mean, part of comics adaptation is adaptation. <laughs> you have to know when to deviate and when not to. Like there yeah. are moments where comics accurate is needed and perfect and then to your point there's moments where you need to modernize it where you yeah. need to make some updates and netflix was you know netflix was pretty sharp about kingpin they basically were like hey we're going to keep him very dapper yeah. very high end but yeah. we're basically going to make his suit tactical which was that worked great <laughs> that show. yeah yeah so let's see what happens with that show that's going to be a very there's going to be a lot of curiosity, Brian, around surrounding that show. And uh, let's see what the first reactions or reviews will be when um, when it's, when it comes out. Um, but yeah, I don't like the timing, though. I don't like the timing, too, because, again, if the Marvels is bad and this is dumped late in the year and this is bad, like that's how we're going to exit 2023 talking about Marvel. Yeah. Give me back old Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. Anyway, what's going on with Kang Dynasty, Brian? Oh, we kind of did call this one. Um, after Quantumania, you know, I think our concerns for Kang Dynasty ratcheted up pretty dramatically because it was the same writer, Jeff Loveness. And I think if you go back to our, Kang, our Quantum Mania review show, one of the suggestions we made was Marvel bring in a new writer to help them out. Yeah. Seems like they went a step further. <laughs> They're saying, get out. It's crazy. They don't... Brian, it's the, the his reaction towards the reaction for Quantum Mania told the story, Brian that he wasn't gonna change because he thought what he was writing was dope and it wasn't the case why do we know look at the box office look at the reviews yeah i don't think he helped himself in the press tour when that movie came out being so defiant yeah. in the face of the criticism and then kind of talking openly about how excited he was to write Kang and do all this sort of stuff. I, I, I do not think that helped his cause. I would, I would, and, I would, I would have fired, I would have been like, I would have first had a talk with him, which I'm pretty sure they did, Brian. And it didn't seem like the conversation was heading in a direction where they felt confident that this dude was going to be the guy to deliver us a billion dollar, a billion dollar movie. Billion dollars. I mean, they, that you know, that's two what billion is, it, it, Avengers movies. You're talking two billion. You, you, but billion we're, but, but we're talking about not even making a billion, Brian. Wouldn't do it today. Not a chance. I, I don't see it. I don't think there's any way they would get there today with that. Um, but it is an interesting time to move, though. We're given that there is a writer strike, right? So they literally have no ability if they're going to do this, right? They're going to scrap whatever work he's done hire somebody else that somebody else cannot write and turn in a script right now not allowed yeah, yeah. so that means that movie is literally frozen 
which means there's no chance to my mind that it's coming out in 2025. And that doesn't even include the Jonathan Majors discussion, which is also hanging over that movie right now. I'm pretty sure, Brian, that there are a lot of discussions being had with possible replacements. Um, ideas, there's nothing wrong with talking about ideas, right? Uh, so it'll be interesting to see who they bring on for Kang Dynasty and if this, I would say, quote unquote, convenience of the writer strike uh, gives them some time to stall. Perfect timing. Well, I think there is a little bit of that ulterior motive of like, if you make that change now, it does give you air cover to delay this movie, right? And sort of then that gives you the wait and see on the major situation. And that kind of puts you in a position to maybe even reset or redirect what this movie is um, by the time we get there. But yeah. they, they just are not, the building blocks for an Avengers movie are just not right, are just not there right now. And the one cornerstone they had has legal trouble. And like, I don't think he's going to go, I don't think he's going to go to prison. You, these cases usually get settled or something happens. And, yeah. But, you know, technically he could go to jail for over a year if he was, if he was convicted. So. And again, it's hard to escape the word strangulation. And also, Brian, there's also these, these rumors going around about the MCU. Uh, rethinking this whole multiverse saga, Brian. Brian, I, I remember Tracy said s saying this, that they should call the MCU now with the multiverse thing, they should call it my, uh, the MCU open door. You can do anything. You can do anything. And that, Brian, gave them the opportunity to do whatever. And they sort of overused that power of being able to do anything and we've been given not so good stuff so what do we do <laughs> what do i we mean there's so that's the problem. There's the problem is there's more than one problem. Yeah. Like, you know, if I look at the, the to me, like, this ties to your point. The loveness situation is interesting because Marvel had success, had some success early on drawing on the Rick and Morty writers room to where there those writers are all over the place now, right? Like mm -hmm. Waldron, Loveness, Jessica Gao. There's so many of them. Yeah. To where now you're almost looking at it and saying, don't we need a voice from somewhere else? Like yeah. if all these people are cut from the same cloth, like don't we want it? Like, you know, like now that there's a blow, kind of a backlash to what these people are putting out, I think Marvel's now trying to pivot to find other writer, right? Writers of a different, different nature. Yeah. And it probably says something that the most successful, right? Right now, the most successful projects they've had recently were written by the directors. Ryan Coogler and James Gunn. Yeah. So there's one problem. It's like, are you too levered to one viewpoint of writing, which is this viewpoint? Yeah. The second is the majors problem. So, I mean, you've probably seen the quotes and I heard that actually, they were, they were on a podcast um, on the Ringerverse because Joanna Robinson works for Vanity Fair and is pretty tight with Marvel. She's got a Marvel book coming out, which actually might be worth a read. Um, and she was mentioning this whole idea of like, the multiverse was never supposed to be this Kang centric, but Jonathan Majors made it this Kang centric because he blew the doors off of Loki. Uh, and then he blew the doors off of his performance in quantum mania. And so Marvel basically bet it all on him, which wasn't the original plan. And now we see they're too levered to one performance yeah. because of the pr troubles he's run into, which then circles back to the problem you and I have talked about for two years now, which is the heroes lineup stinks. You got three major problems. Yeah. How, do you, how do you fix all of them in less than two years? Reboot. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's, is it easier to take oh, yeah. the L and just say, you know what? New phases. 
new phases, new plan, new storyline. We're going in a different direction. Our bad. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I think you, 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 you go in a different direction where you sort of escape this multiverse situation and, and start telling other stories. Because right now, I think there's only one group or one scenario that uh, I think that can save the MCU. The X-Men. And let's see what happens there. I'm going to plug in. I'm going to plug in that. You remember, remember that uh, scene in uh, the X-Men? Uh, it was uh, that's the, the Phoenix Saga. And all hope was lost. And, and Xavier said, there's only one thing that can save us now. The X-Men. <laughs> I'm going to go find that clip and put it there. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, Mar Marvel, honestly, right now, the one thing Marvel has coming down the pike that I would say is a surefire hit is really a one-off, and that's Deadpool. Yeah. I don't see any way Deadpool's not a hit. We can debate how good of a movie it's going to yeah, be, yeah, yeah. but Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds in a buddy cop lethal weapon 48 out is going to make money yeah tango and they cash. have that mm -hmm. but that's not part of the universe and yeah. that's the problem that's the problem for the mcu right it, it, it's like for disney it's like all right we probably have a billion dollar movie here that's coming but like it doesn't go anywhere for us yeah, yeah. i can't sell merchandise over this uh Let's see, man. It's, it's, it's a very interesting situation here because we can't go on the same path that we've been on. And I could tell you this, Brian. I think it would be beneficial for a reboot and start a new storyline where X-Men are involved in some capacity, whatever, right? But then it will be so interesting to have those cameos of a new Captain America or a new Iron Man. And these other these other characters that we've used to see, but this is something different. For for from whatever situation or scenario you guys cook up, that brings us over to this uh, place and this storyline. So that's these are the decisions that they, they're thinking about. I do think we're gonna get you know I do think we're gonna get some good TV. I mean, with Secret Invasion in June, I still have some hope. The problem is obviously Secret Invasion is gonna bridge us into the Marvels, and that probably will erase yeah. that momentum. You know, Loki, I think, is going to be obviously high expectations. There are some changes in the showrunners and the writers there. So maybe it's a tough act to follow. And obviously with the major situation, he already shot his part. The show is done. So you're probably going to get a reminder of how great he is in the part. And then you're going to have that. Yeah, but is this is this the last time I see him do this? Yeah. And like, how do they kind of pivot from whatever this show is going to leave us? But I do think for the summer, at least, we have, we, we should have two good shows. But then we're going to end the year, as I said, potentially with some real duds in the Marvels and, and Echo, if the rumors are to be believed. So one step forward, two steps back, it seems like. Yeah. I am pulling for hope that Jonathan Majors um, is able to eloquently, um, I guess ask for forgiveness or recognize that there's some issues that he has to work on and 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 perhaps people will look at that at see it as a first step in you know a better direction for him and and, and not hearing about this again look i mean the good news for him is that it it, it I mean, if you're looking for silver linings is it looks like warner brothers pulled this off with a much more dire situation with Ezra Miller so that if, if Jonathan Major is looking for hope it's right there <laughs> is that if you can lay low say the right things and deliver good performances box office seems like it'll forgive you yeah yeah we'll see I was gonna make a bad R. Kelly joke but I decided not to <laughs> but hey the MCU, uh, I you know, it's not that I say I, I I thought that we would ever get here. I thought that we would, but it's just surreal in being at this moment that we predicted that we would end up being. 
in talking about the MCU. It. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. the speed of it. It's just yeah. the speed of how quickly <clears throat> this 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 side of the genre went from untouchable to almost seeming unwinnable uh, in the span of a you know just over a year, really. Yeah. And Disney has a lot of problems, Brian. With all the, with a lot of the with the Star Wars. Marvel, it's, it's it's just crazy, yo. I think I think it, I don't think Indiana Jones is gonna help that any. Based, on, we'll talk about that when it comes out. But whoo, that could be a crash landing. One final thing before we, we wrap this one up. The other thing that they can probably do, Brian. I was thinking about this. Is that they spend a hell of a lot of money for promotion, which they haven't been doing. I haven't seen trailers for this on TV. I haven't seen a lot of stuff for for. Um, uh, Indiana Jones, but to promote it, look at look at what we spent and we did it and we lost. Take a L, take a big one, and be like, "Yo, you gotta go." I guess the good news for Di- I guess the one good piece of news for Disney is technically they are the owners of the Avatar franchise now. So yeah. <laughs> they can just pencil in that two plus billion dollars every couple of years from Mr. Cameron for yeah. that. But yeah, because they got a yeah. another one coming out this year. Then it is here, right? Uh, uh, next year. I think, okay. I think it's next. I think it's next year. Yeah, okay. Part okay. Three. He's already shot part three and four. So, wow. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show goes on. Yeah!